Hi everyone, it's Renee again from Nostalgic Needlework. I have gathered together some of my materials that I'm working on and I wanted to share with you the Paula Vaughn piece that probably is the dearest to my heart. But first I need to explain where I'm filming. I am in my piano studio. I've been a piano teacher for about 30 years and due to my tremors I've had to quit teaching just about a year ago but I still love to come in here and play the piano and look through things and I was blessed with a lot of good students and some of them have gone on to play the piano later in life and some have not, but I just enjoyed working with them. I guess my favorite age group would have to be the, the um, elementary school kids, but I also like middle schoolers too. They're pretty awesome. I wanted to show you, and I'm going to stand up. If you hear jingling, that's my little mascot, Bailey Ann. When she's brave, I'll show her to all of you. She is a Bichon Poodle. She's nine years old and I've had her since she was seven weeks old and she thinks she's a little people and she's really my baby. I'm going to try to stand up and show you the Paula Vaughn piece that is the nearest and dearest to my heart. This is Tea, Roses, and Romance. I hope you can see it okay. I completed this when I was expecting my third son. And I had a lot of sleepless nights. And I guess that's how I finished it up. It was stitched on linen. And I'm sorry, but I can't remember the uh, number for the pattern. But... It was my first time stitching on linen, and I loved it. If you'll notice right here, I did need to improve on my back stitching, which brings me to another subject. I was a model stitcher for two different companies. Um, throughout my stitching career. The first company was out of Lilburn, Georgia, and I honestly cannot remember either one of the company's names. They were not well known, but one of the designers wanted to see some of my work, and I showed her the Paul Vaughn piece, and she quickly told me that my back stitching needed to be improved. So that was kind of a hard lesson learned, but it was okay. I needed to hear it. And the second lady that I did some model work for was out of state. I can't remember. She was in a northern state, but I can't remember exactly which one. I met her over email, and she agreed. I sent her some pictures, and she agreed for me to be a model stitcher. Um, right after I started stitching for her, my husband was deployed to Iraq, and I stopped after stitching, I don't know, for a few months for her because I was just too scattered. Our sons were teenagers, and our daughter was in dance, and she was a competition dancer, so that kept us on the road a lot, so... I didn't really feel like I had the time to devote to the pieces that would have been fair to her. So I finished up the last one and I thanked her. And I haven't seen any of her patterns. I think I would recognize her name if I saw it somewhere, but I don't know. Maybe one day I'll find it. I didn't make notes this time so that I'll remember what to tell you. I guess I need to tell you about my whips. One thing that I like to do when I go somewhere, especially if it's a historical place or a museum, is to bring home 
a cross stitch pattern if I can find it. And my husband and I went to Gettysburg and then drove through Virginia and North South Carolina. Um, spent a couple nights in Nashville, Tennessee this past summer. And while we were in Virginia, I'm sorry, Nashville, Tennessee, we visited the Hermitage, which is the home of and President Andrew Jackson. And so right now, I'm working on this piece. I found out that the same designer, um, it's Barbara Bassinger, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, with the Posey Collection, does a lot of the designing for these um, commemorative patterns. Sometimes I can find them, just the pattern, which is what I like to do, but then a couple times I've had to buy the kit, which is okay, but um, I usually stitch in hand. I found the Q-snaps were not a good fit for me, and the traditional embroidery hoops were not a good fit for me, so I usually stitch in hand, but here is what I have done on the Hermitage. I'm working this side of the house and then I'll work the other side. This kit did, this did come as a kit, so it didn't include, I'm sorry, it did not come as a kit. I had the Ada and I had the flosses because they were DMC. So I'm working along on that. But since I've been watching Floss Tube, my interests have expanded somewhat, and I may have to change some of my projects because I'm really interested in doing a reproduction sampler. And then there are just so many patterns out there. Believe it or not, I'm only about 30 miles from Atlanta, and I cannot find a single needlework store anywhere near me. I found three stitchers, two, well, two channels that the ladies are from Georgia. The first one is Dina at Half Cross Stitch, and I absolutely love watching her videos. I just think she's awesome, and she does beautiful work. And D squared cross stitching. Those ladies just crack me up. And they don't live, I don't believe, that far from me. Um, so I'm hoping to at some point get to meet those three stitchers. Um, they're having a get together in kind of northwest Georgia uh, next weekend. And I'm going to try to go if I can. My oldest son is about to have to have social, I'm sorry, shoulder surgery. So that may be the last opportunity I get to have to go anywhere for a couple weeks, but there may not be anything coming up for a month or so after that. I don't know. I'll just have to keep my floss too. I have this next project fitted, but I haven't um, started it yet. I'm blessed to still have my parents. And when my mom was, I believe, 73, turning 74, she had always dreamed of going to California. And I wanted to take her for a birthday trip, just she and I. I'm the only daughter. So we went and we visited several states out west. We had such a good time. But one place I wanted to take her was Santa Barbara because her name is Barbara and it was her 74th birthday. And while we were there, uh, we visited the mission in Santa Barbara and I found this little kit. This did come with all the pieces. Actually, it was discounted, so I don't know if 
it was being discontinued or what, but I was just thankful to get my hands on at least a pattern. It again is by Barbara Bangsinger, I hope. I think I messed that up from Posey. And it came with a hoop. And the floss, which I think there's some pretty colors there. And a printed, which I don't usually do, but it's a printed pattern. And it says in the information that the pattern should, I'm sorry, the printing should um, go away when I wash it. I don't know if it will or not. I'm going to try to cover it up really good with the floss. And it also came with some batting. And um, this is supposed to make into a pillow. So I'm going to do my best with it. And it's a keepsake anyway. The next thing I have kitted up is from when my daughter and I visited the Biltmore house in North Carolina. And it's a petite sampler. It came with the Ada and also the uh, floss, which you can see there. And I'm hoping to get started on that. It's been several years since we made that trip, and I'm trying to catch up. Kind of got behind there for a while. Uh, let's see what else I have here. I usually don't buy kits. I may have said that already. But sometimes if I can find a pattern that I really love and they don't have the kit, then I'll... I'm sorry, if they don't have it, just the pattern, I will buy the kit. And this is one that I bought several years ago, and I really want to do this for my daughter. It's a Paula Vaughn, and it's through a father's eyes. Um, she is a college student, so she's not married yet, but I'd love to have this one, and also the through a mother's eyes, finished for her for when she does get married. I have to admit, these bring tears to my eyes sometimes when I look at them. The only thing that I'm concerned about, it came with Ada. And while I really like Ada, I really love linen. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to keep the Ada for something else and then stitch this pattern on linen. It came with the threads, which are quite pretty, I think. I love Polygon palettes. It seems like, I don't know, they just take us back to, a, her designs take us back to a simpler time and make me peaceful. She also does some references a lot of times to scripture, and I really love that too. And the last well, no, I have three more things to show you. Um, I found these patterns. There was a pretty little needle workshop in Helen, Georgia. And when my daughter and I came back from the Biltmore, we stopped in Helen and I went in that needle workshop. And like I said, that's been several years ago and it's since gone out of business. But I found two patterns that I was not familiar with the designer but I just fell in love with the design. Um, the first one is called Romantic Stitcher. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce this because you probably won't know what I'm saying if I do. But I really admire this designer. This calls for um, actually DMC flosses but also for linen. So I've got to purchase the linen for that. And I found one more. And it's the same designer. And this is called Merry Little Christmas. And I'm just a mother through and through. And the fact that she's holding two little children on her lap just really touched my heart. So that's why I bought that one. This pattern calls for linen also. But 
it's a different color. So I'm going to see if I can find something that looks relatively similar. And these are both going to be probably time-consuming pieces, but they'll be works in progress for a while. And the latest thing that I purchased, and I found this because it's lost it. And I just had it, and now it's gone. It is a little Lizzie Kate pattern, Merry Little Christmas, and it's for a little ornament. And I've never done a Lizzie Kate pattern, so I wanted to try it, and I thought that would be a good way. Of It came with a linen, but I had to order the threads that were called for, and I have those on over. I should be receiving them pretty soon. And I guess that's about all that I have going right now. Let me tell you, I started out as a one piece at a time stitcher. And that is really who I am. But after watching Floss Tube and seeing everything that you wonderful ladies can put together, I am attempting to do a rotation. Now whether or not that will come to fruition, I don't know. I'm just going to have to give it a little try and see. If it doesn't work, that's fine. I'll have them all kitted up and ready to go when... I'm ready to stitch them, but I have a feeling that with all these new patterns I'm finding that some of these may go on the back burner for a while. I do have um, something that I'd like to gift to someone. And I suppose if you'll comment um, in the box below this video, and just tell me that you want it and make sure I have a email address or something. I'll get it in the mail to you. It is a Thomas Kincaid piece and I love um, the Painter of Light. However, I purchased this kit and didn't realize, once again a kit, that it is a, let's see what they call it, embellished cross stitch so the designs printed on the Ada and I think you just use the flosses that are included to add to the pattern the reason I bought that was because of it being a scene from San Francisco and while my mom and I were on our trip she got to ride over the San Francisco Golden Gate Bridge on her 74th anniversary I'm sorry 74th birthday and I actually have a picture of her doing a thumbs up on that ride, but maybe I can show it sometime if she gives me permission to show her picture. She doesn't like to have her picture made. But I would love to give that to somebody who thinks that they would use it or who they, if they know someone who likes to stitch those um, cross, embellished cross stitch. Uh, if there's more than one person, I'll use the number generator that I've seen some of the other ladies use, and I will pick a number. I guess I'll close this. Let's see. Today's Thursday, September 7th. So I'll wait until September 10th. No, let's do September 17th. And... I'll look and see who has responded, and I'll go from there. But I will close out the requests on September 17th. I've heard other ladies say, please don't refer to this as a giveaway because people sometimes scour YouTube, I guess, for giveaways, and we certainly don't want any of that. So I really, my heart's desire is to give it to somebody that truly would enjoy and get benefit out of it. Let me see if I have anything else in my little notes. One thing with this trimmer, it, or my age, has caused me to be very forgetful. So I have to count and count again and count a third time. And another thing I didn't tell you about myself, 
I raised my children, and my husband was deployed twice to Iraq. And when he was deployed the second time, I really felt that God had laid on my heart that if I was ever going to get my bachelor's degree, that it would be a good time. So I began college at the age of 45 years old. A funny story is that I was at a basketball game. Uh, it was required. I had to attend from one of my first classes three different events on the college campus. I went to a private university in Gainesville, Georgia. It had been a college that I had planned on going to since I was just a little girl and just decided to go to work after I graduated from high school rather than going straight into college. But anyway, I digress. Um, I was at this basketball game and the parents were all there. It was a it's an all women's college, um, transitioning now to a lot of online, but it's beautiful, beautiful campus, a lot of old buildings and actually my daughter had many, many uh, dance recitals there, and I enjoyed sharing that with her, but, uh, let's see, what it was, what was I going to say? Oh, the basketball game. I was at the basketball game, and parents were sitting all around me, and one sweet mother was behind me, and she said, oh, are you a professor? And I said, no, I'm a freshman. I'm sure she laughed at me under her breath, but that was okay. I was the age of most of, I'm sorry, I thought I heard somebody coming in. I was the age of most of my classmates' mothers. I had children older than the girls I was going to school with, but it was such a wonderful time. I primarily studied music while I was there, and then I... Um, eventually went to the online program and finished up my associate's degree in liberal studies. And right now, while I'm sitting here, I am in my last semester, by the grace of God, of my journey to get my bachelor's degree. I'm an online student at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. I actually could have walked in the graduation uh, this past summer, and I really wanted to. The president was there to, as the speaker, but a lot of things were going on here at home, and I just couldn't see a way clear to get up there. But while we were on vacation, my husband took me by there, and I really enjoyed getting to see the campus firsthand. And, I've enjoyed all my time there. I enjoy the professors. I enjoy the classes. And December, I'll finish up my degree and they'll mail my diploma to me. My degree is in internet interdisciplinary studies. The other part of the tremor is that it affects my speech sometimes, so I apologize for that. My degree is in interdisciplinary studies, and I have three um, cognates. The first is Christian counseling. The second is fine arts, piano teacher. And the third is social studies. I recently, um, in this one of the last two classes I'm taking, was introduced to health and wellness coaching. And I'm quite interested in that because there's a lot of work that can be done working with people that are living with disabilities. And that really attracts me. I would love to help people who have disabilities to learn to, that they can still live a, a good life and they can find peace and happiness and stay healthy. Um, they don't have to be a victim of their disability. It's just something that goes along with who they are. And so I may pursue some more training in that after I graduate. I don't know. Uh, I told my husband today I'm so forgetful that I think it's about time that I was finished with school. But I do have enough credit hours that I should be able to volunteer maybe, um, at a place that does social work 
or at a hospital or maybe a church that does counseling and just hopefully assist some of the clients. I thought that maybe through some of the health issues I've faced, I could be a help to someone else and make their life just a little bit easier. Well, I guess that's all I have. I've chattered on for about 25 minutes here, so you're probably tired of hearing me talk. But I'm really happy to be on Floss Tube. I really am looking forward to meet, meeting all of you throughout the United States. I would appreciate you keeping Florida and our state of Georgia in your prayers. The hurricane is really headed to, it appears, the east coast of Georgia. And our governor has already issued a mandatory evacuation, I believe, for Saturday for those living on the east coast, which I assume to include Savannah, I'm sure Jekyll Island, St. Simon's Island. Uh, there's probably something I'm forgetting. Tybee Island. But um, I do have a cousin that lives in Tybee, so I would just appreciate you keeping all the people in the path of that hurricane in your prayers. I pray that they can find safety and that they don't lose the material things. But it was like I heard on the news today, the material things can be replaced, but your life can't. So, with that, I think that I'll say goodbye for now. I'll be back on probably on the 17th, if not sooner. I want to pull out some of my completed works some more to show you. There are two pieces that are particularly special to me. I can't remember who designed them, but one is called Why God Made Little Boys, and the other is called Why God Made Little Girls. And because I was a boy mom first, I made the... I stitched the pattern for my boys, and when I had it framed, I had each of the first, I had a picture of each of them, the first picture that actually was made in a studio of them, and framed at the bottom, and I guess they can fight over that when I'm gone, but when my daughter was born, I knew that I needed it to even things up, so I had to go on a mad search for why God made little girls, and I was so excited when I found it. And I did not use her first studio picture. I used her first Easter picture, which has her sitting in a basket with a bunny rabbit. So they're just stitched on Ada. Um, nothing complicated or special. They're mostly words, but they're very special to me because it was a tribute to my babies. And in the next video, I want to show you all and put out a call. I have a piece that is half completed of The Last Supper. But sometime in the last few years, I can't find the pattern. I thought I found it on eBay. I ordered the one that I found, and when I got it home, I realized it was not the same pattern. So I'm hoping that if I show it to you all, you may know where I could go to maybe find the same pattern to purchase again, or if I can't, I'll just have to purchase another, maybe stitch the one that I've already bought. But I'd love to have that for my dining room. So I'll show you that on the next video, and hopefully... I'll have the other pieces, a few of them. Um, I want to show you my first piece, which was the church. And I also want to show you a piece that I stitched to commemorate when my husband adopted my three boys. It is a 1990s pattern, geese, duck, and all. But it's very special to me because I, um, it had a little board that you were supposed to probably stitch when your home was established. But rather than putting the year that we got married, I put the year that he adopted my three sons. And um, that was real special to me. 
So I know I'll show you those, and over the time I'll show you a few more. I don't have a lot to have been stitching as long as I have. I'm giving a few things away, and like I said, I am a slow stitcher. Maybe some of you ladies can teach me how to stitch faster, but I'm pretty set my ways. I hope that you will all be blessed, and have a wonderful time stitching, and I'll see you soon.